We're dangerously derailed. And I fucking hate Captain America. <laughs> give me the links, give me the links! Yeah, we're doing the Avengers next, and I imagine it's just gonna be a big circle jerk. What the fuck is wrong with us? Hail Hydra! Thor! Directed by Kenneth Is Brown. that what we're here to talk about? 50 minutes is- in? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is... The, the most anticlimactic introduction to a show. They're not... The history of shows. I don't know that they would see it that way, but, um... <laughs> Uh, this is Infinity Warm Up, and we're doing the uh, Ant Man movie, right? Yeah, who are you? Jabril and uh, or Brill and uh, what's your name, dog? Uh, Trey, I think. We are going over the uh, Ant Man movie. This is the end of Phase Two. Yes, indeed, we made it. We made it finally to uh, good ones, to clunkers, and uh, something in between. <laughs> is this one the something in between? Uh, you know, we'll find out, right? We'll learn. You're gonna learn today. I feel like, um, this has been a tease for a bit with, uh, speculatively you hating this movie, but, uh, we'll, uh, we'll learn, as it were. But first, some housekeeping, yo. Robert Downey Jr. himself is making our life harder. (laughs) Fucking Ant-Man, or fucking, rather, Iron Man, uh, personally moved the date of Infinity War up. Uh, from May 4th to April 27th. Uh, did you see that little uh, tweet chain? Yeah, can we talk about that for a second? It's, is that bananas at all that that dude can just talk to the world through, you know, like just, just by sending a text message out in the form of a tweet at <laughs> Disney or whoever he had to send it to to do that? I mean, clearly it was, you know, pre-planned, but it's a cute little stunt, you know? Reminds me of a... Uh, all the marketing for Cloverfield movies. So the pre-planned yeah, part, yeah, and I I agree, and I feel like it's it's a little too obvious. There there's no way they would release. I know Disney owns all the franchises now, but these two specific Star Wars and Marvel or the MCU. Why would mm-hmm. you have an MCU movie release on May the fourth? Well, uh, there's no Star Wars date in that slot, right? And Not Disney in owns Star Wars. Day, no, like there is a movie coming out that month. I suppose they could do the same thing where what's his name, Han Solo, just sends an email and he just tries <laughs> to see if it can come out on the fourth because I think it comes out on the twenty fifth, something like that. Of what year? Like that? That's uh, this year. That's this year. The Han Solo movie is coming out. Yeah, I feel like I just heard about that. I thought that would be ways away. Okay. okay. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let's hope not. Are you excited for I know you're not really a Star Wars guy. No, not for Star and I Wars. might have even asked you this on but another it just, podcast. It but... seems like th- that would be a day that movie theaters should play, um, you know, Star Wars movies. Because the only relation to May 4th, you know, it happens to be on Friday this year. Why would they put, why would they put MCU up against that? I feel like it's like WrestleMania going, hey, what day is the, uh, the what, what's it called? <laughs> The Super Bowl. <laughs> We're gonna do it the same day as the Super Bowl. We're gonna fucking divide and conquer. No, mm-mm. don't don't oh, do yeah. that. It, it's crazy to think that Star Wars and Marvel are under the same uh, corporate umbrella, but uh, yeah, they wouldn't do that to themselves. DC, on the other hand, they would they would love to release a film next to every single DCU installment. Um, Hoss Whedon stepped down from the uh, Batgirl movie, so really the only thing DC has going on is the uh, is that Aquaman movie coming out later this year. Wait, okay, I don't know anything about this, so let's find out together, me and and the audience. Uh, <laughs> Batgirl, what? Where's yeah, Where's Robin? It, it, Hold on, what the what? <laughs> is she cooler than? I was like, that'd be cool because I think anyone who's like Batman but smaller, totally yeah. awesome. They're always light on their feet. You know what I mean? That's what's so cool about Robin. And I'm like, Batgirl, yeah, cool. I'm like, did we forget about Robin? Or are they not going to have Joseph Gordon-Levitt d- utilize that role at all? Well, within the canon of this current DC universe, Robin's already dead. Presumably beaten to death with a crowbar by the Joker. But um, his his uniform is enshrined with the Why So Serious or some oh. some kind of graffiti on it. Um, but there's like but, four Robins, man. Come on, you could do a movie about one funny. of them. 
Now, but here's the thing. Can you, though? Because you need an established Batman. And currently it's Ben Affleck, but I think Ben Affleck is completely done <laughs> with this whole thing. And Don't wants judge no... what DC can do. They do what they want. They pick up at any point in time and just start a movie. Just right now. Green Lantern 3. <laughs> Join the journey. I mean, th- that was the plan, too. You, you saw the little Green Lantern tease in the Justice League. But um, I think they're going to blow it up. Uh I mean, obviously, another Wonder Woman movie is going to come out, and um, they might try to reset it with Flashpoint. But uh, with this Batgirl news, uh, Haas Whedon, uh, formerly the director of The Avengers and Age of Ultron, which we just talked about, uh, he was writing a script for it, but uh, stepped away. And uh, now they're looking for another director. But my thing is, like, characters like Robin and Batgirl are, are, are you know, contingent on having an established Batman <laughs> already in the universe that you you know and you're familiar with. <laughs> like, like how, how, how are they going to do a Batgirl movie with no Batman? I don't know, dude. That's a good point. <laughs> that all comes back to Batman at some point. They're, not, they're never just working on their own. The fuck is Batgirl doing? Mm. Well, um, either way, we have a month and some change to crank out the rest of Phase 3. Because Mr. Tony Stark himself is uh, hell-bent on watching Infinity War early. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that, too, because I think, um, I'm not sure if May the 4th, if I'll be gone, but uh, I'm going to be, like, out on vacation for my birthday right around that time. And, like, I'm literally, like, gone. So I didn't plan on seeing the movie unless it was going to be, like, a Thursday night release. So now that it's a week early, go Tony Stark or Robert Downey (laughs) Jr. I mean, it's frightening how synonymous they are at this point. To the point where, and I think I've raised this point on the podcast as well, but I like MCU movie continuity more than I like the comic books nowadays. (laughs) It really bothers me that that's the case. Are you serious? Well, I mean, you know, you know how convoluted comic books can get, and if you're not um, on track of every release and subsequently the tie-ins, then you, you kind of lose the minutia of it. And um, but because there's less options, it's it's somehow better. Well, it's just I like knowing what transpired in the universe, and you know, six one six is incredibly you know, rebooted and re-rebooted and what, this guy's from the future, old man Logan, who are these Scott Summers clones running about? Like, this is until, you know, shit gets weird. And by the way, like, as much as we railed on, uh, what, I I guess we really didn't like Iron Man 3, the Hulk, and uh, I was kind of mean to Age of Ultron, but they've been making great movies. Like, eventually this has to end. You know, <laughs> they, is they this where it all comes to one, a halt? Right. <laughs> yeah, I, and actually, actually, that's I, a no. I don't want to hate on this movie too much because there was actually some interesting parts in it. Some some parts I think they could have expanded on, but um, it was only a two hour movie, so you know. It was two hours. Uh, maybe like one fifty eight or nine. Like I, I'm, I don't know. I'm doing the entire play time. I don't know what you're supposed to sum up is it just start to end does that include the credits and the after cut scenes and shit i think all just under two hours yeah 117 minute runtime yeah yeah. pretty long movie to not have enough of the fun parts that i wanted to have added in there damn it (laughs) okay so we begin by talking about this movie by what i want to point out okay i have this sheet of paper in front of me with information on it you I know. printed out a physical sheet of paper? No, I... I <laughs> What's I happening? I made this. Jumping to, to the, the guy who's playing Ant-Man real quick. The guy's name is Scott Lang, right? The guy has... Uh, Whoa. What? Whoa. Like, you're, you're going into the meat of the Should podcast? I... No summary? No break? No? I thought you <laughs> already just... did the intro. Deep diving? Yeah. Jesus right. Christ, man. Excuse me. I want to give you some time to play some musical promos and all I, that. Th- you know what? The, this is my first note. <laughs> so this is in order of that, me watching the movie. All right. I guess I'll take a step back. It's called <laughs> Ant-Man. That's all I have uh, before this. Well, um, like always, let me let me start with the summary because because uh, we have a tendency to lose the audience, from what I'm told. Uh, forced out of his own company by former protege Darren Cross, uh, Dr. Hank Pym, played remarkably by Michael Douglas, 
recruits the talents of Scott Lang, uh, Paul Rudd, who's a master thief who's just been released from prison to become the new Ant-Man. Uh, trained by Hank Pym, he is armed with a suit that allows him to shrink in size um, while maintaining normal person strength. So I guess that's superhuman strength while he's small. Well, we'll have to get into that because I'm a little... Well, if he on tiny people powers, but the miniature hero must use his new talent to prevent uh, Darren Cross, also known as the Yellow Jacket, uh, from perfecting the same technology, um, essentially being Ironmonger, uh, and using it as a weapon for evil. Um, Jabril, what does your little piece of paper say? <laughs> oh, that, that's the, the whole synopsis. That's pretty much everything that happens in this movie. I'm very concerned um, of the timeline of this movie, so I guess I was kind of jumping ahead, but I just had all these thoughts about why they used an old Hank Pym in this movie instead of having him be like some, I don't know, some not young scientist, but younger, not like 70. Mm. And I feel like the only reason to, to do that is because they give him history with the Starks, right? Yeah, I mean, do do you like that they did that? I thought it was a cool angle. In retrospect, I did. Well, but I don't know much about Ant Man. As far as I know, like from the Avengers cartoon movies that I've seen, where Ant Man's a character <laughs> in there, like it's Hank Pym. And then when I find out this movie is like this other, this other character, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and I, kinda, yeah, yeah. I I guess it's kind of like Batman Beyond in a way. Um, but I just had to know. I had to do a little bit of research about the character Scott Lang. And like, mm-hmm. and he he says like in the movie. So I'm trying to compare the movie with what actual people put on Wikipedia and what I assume is real <laughs> in, okay. in the comics. But you can never be too sure with all the fake news nowadays. But well, let's hope there's not it. fake Marvel news in there. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't well, I don't want to live in this world. But <laughs> so Scott Lang supposedly has a master's in electrical engineering. Mm-hmm. Which, this is according to the wiki or the movie. The movie and the oh. wiki, yeah. They're, okay, they're, okay, they're on the same page in this. That's uh, that's the same level of education, at least that Tony Stark got. Mm-hmm. So that like that kind of filled a lot of gaps in for the, um, for my memory from when I first watched the movie because I had no idea. I must have skipped a few lines during the my first watching of the movie to find out why is this guy so smart? How's he breaking into that vault so easily? Why he's so smart? <laughs> yeah. That was uh, one of my favorite scenes, by the way, the vault entry. I, I like the, um, the, the way they uh, introduced Hank Pym in this because uh, in the comic books, he is a bit, I, I wouldn't even call him a controversial character, but he's one of the uh, weirder, I guess, interpretations. So for them to use the uh, Scott Lang um, and have him be, be trained by Hank Pym, is a good way to to be introduced to the Pym particles are more what's present in the comic books as far as um who gets to use the Ant Man suit and the comic books it's while that while it is created by Hank Pym and he does take up the mantle of uh, Ant Man there's also Giant Man uh, you know Goliath uh, there's Scott Lang his daughter Cassie Lang is the current Ant Man on the Young Avengers there's just a bunch of people who utilize the uh, Pym particles and play some kind of role in the Avengers so it doesn't really matter who you stick in the suit it just uh, matters who is currently uh, using the Pym particles in the comic books. So to introduce it through the lens of Hank Pym as an older sort of Batman Beyond figure, like you said, I thought that was a a cool play on the origin story Um, because otherwise this this film is very paint by numbers. And subsequently this film suffers from the same problem that I, that I have with uh, Dr. Strange as well, which is, I, I think that it's a, kind of paint by numbers like very flow chart for marvel um how they're how they're doing some of their origin story movies like like they're hitting the same story beats um that worked uh with uh 2008's iron man only <laughs> with uh with uh actors that are are not on the same level as uh one robert downey jr you know did, I mean, did you feel that way for this movie? That they were just trying to, like, reprise their greatest hits? 
Well, okay. First, you have to explain to me what does paint by numbers mean? Like, the, there's, you know, the, um, they inherit the suit. So for Tony Stark, like, genius invents a suit because he was trapped in a cave in Afghanistan. So Scott Lang, uh, thief, wants to become the hero or somebody that his daughter respects, inherits a suit from a guy who... By the way, how ridiculous was it <laughs> the way that Hank Pym found him? But yeah, you know, there's the training montage, there's the mid sequence fight, and then you fight a guy who has the exact same powers as you, and then you put a tiny little bow on it by tying it to the rest of the oh, Avengers universe. You yeah. know? Well, like very definitely flow that chart. part where they have the same power. Like that that's the vaguest yeah, thing ever. It's like Yellow they started Jacket, that who's just the abomination, who's Ironmonger, who's um whatever the hell Kilius, Kaecilius <laughs> from Doctor Strange. Who's Ironmonger. Ironmonger uh, Jeff Bridges from Iron Man 1 or Damn. whatever. Whiplash. We'll call him Whiplash. <laughs> from... Same guy. Dude in a big metal suit. His name was Iron Ironmonger in part one? Oh, I got to go back and listen to my own podcast. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. Because like, what you... wasn't Killmonger was the, that was Black Panther's enemy, right? Yeah, yeah. The fuck? What? You're close. You're close. <laughs> um... But let, let's start off uh, before we roll through some of uh, the major points in the movie. Well, uh, well, what you're saying is what I already thought like was already you know happening as far as everyone's origin story as, as it was. I thought like um, like just some kind of freak accident happened to the right person, and from what we found out before, somebody goes through like a tragic accident or something to kind of change how they see life, and then they decide to become a superhero, right? Yeah, I I don't know if I'm so much blaming Marvel from for for copying their own strategy because it's incredibly effective and it's honestly how most comic book origins happen it's just uh, I don't want to call it fatigue because I do love superhero movies it's just I don't know maybe it's just that it doesn't the the leading character in this case Paul Rudd was just not Paul Ruddy <laughs> enough I, I mean, think like I felt like everybody was kind of sleepwalking through this entire movie with the exception of a uh, well, Michael the Douglas <laughs> oh, and you I I don't know I didn't know what to expect from Michael Douglas I noticed that like they kept recording even though like his voice was kind of shot and during half the scenes like he's he had like down and talked and then they just kind of kept that there. I was like, are you serious? They didn't just say, could you just do that line again? Don't like, don't crack you this time. Thank Man, you. this is a treasure. You don't ask him to do his line again. <laughs> he hit it right the first time. Um, I, I, yeah, I see your point. Um, may, maybe the problem with this movie specifically um, uh, is a result of a lot of the uh, pre-production controversy. Uh, this movie is directed by Peyton Reed. Uh, from uh, Bring It On is one of his only notable credits that I like. Did you ever see Bring It On, by the way? I'm sure I saw parts of it. That movie is super fucking woke. I love Bring It On. I think but, I, can, um, I can help you out here, man. I think um, if you just kind of start looking at a lot of these movies as like just long episodes instead of like, <laughs> like it, I don't think I think you're right. It doesn't deserve its own movie, but it somehow filled two hours on the big screen. No, yeah, I know what but you're talking like, about. I think the... the value of movies is just kind of going down. And uh. the, the price definitely. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, movies aren't what they used to be. Like, I love movies. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, I feel like I've just seen so many at this point. Like, I, <laughs> I hate a lot of them, most of yeah. them. You're getting a little existential on me. I don't. I don't think this is a critique on the on the nature of, of cinema. I think. I mean, the for goodness' had sake, to have an origin it. story, and at this point, there's like twenty Marvel movies. It's not all of them are going to be good. They're all just going to lead towards the story. I just think if they're going to do that, maybe two hours of this film, maybe they could have filled an hour in with Avengers or something like that instead of just <laughs> fucking Falcon. Well, it's, it's, it's the one they could afford. Right. <laughs> this movie went through a lot of hell in the uh, pre-production and production phases. Uh, this was actually supposed to be, I believe, a phase one movie. Um, but 
but uh, all all kinds of hangups Not happened. To money. It. Initially, uh, the director of this movie was supposed to be Edgar Wright, but uh, he stepped away um, from this project, citing creative differences. He, uh, um, this is kind of what happened to Age of Ultron as well as. Uh, uh, they, <laughs> the directors Haas Whedon and Edgar Wright just did not want to jump through the hoops that Kevin Feige and the uh, higher ups at, at Marvel wanted them to, or rather they found it. At least Haas Whedon found it difficult, but managed to do it. Whereas Edgar Wright just walked away from this project entirely, um, and it left uh, Paul Rudd and um, some other people to uh, rewrite this movie in a haste, and they brought. That's Peyton Reed suck. on to uh, to finish it. Yeah, it wasn't good. Or rather, the boss I mean, just walks this out. is this Hello? is the. Uh... <laughs> You're still getting paid, right? <laughs> uh, I didn't get my check in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like you, you can kind of see the results on the screen. This movie's sort of clunky, don't you think? Where you have long exposition scenes in between. Like periods of not a lot happening, but then there's like a flare like to the it CG that you can... in this movie with the answer just flying around in that one, um, uh, in that one scene trying to do the whole you know thing where they all sync up and they electrify and they shut down the servers or whatever. No, I thought that was cool. I mean, the movie looks polished, and that's the virtual effects team. I'm saying that the story suffers a bit, but but like in a very uneven way. Like you can tell it was supposed to be. An Edgar Wright. Did, are you familiar with a lot of uh, Edgar Wright's work? Uh, Scott Pilgrim, um, Baby Driver, things like that. Seen Scott Pilgrim. Have you Have you gotten to see Baby Driver at no, all? No. Uh, well, uh, he a- Edgar Wright has a very specific sort of flair uh, that really shows through in the um, editing and uh, I guess sound mixing of his work. And there's there's certain portions of the scene. In fact, if you want to try it right now, let's cue up that uh, first clip with uh, Michael Pena. Um, very early on in the movie, uh, you see, um, you see uh, his partner in crime, uh, Luis, played by Michael Pena, explaining um, a tip that uh, that he gets uh, in regards to a job because uh, Scott Lang has recently gotten out of prison. And this scene, to me, um, definitely came from the brain of Edgar Wright. At least that's what I feel like. I mean, there's no real way of knowing the distinction, but when you, uh, if you want to play this right now, hopefully the audio picks up. Okay. I was at a wine tasting with my cousin Ernesto. Mainly reds, and you know I don't. I hear nothing. <laughs> Is it playing? Say the day of you can't. I don't know and if you're supposed to hear it. Emily, that we with, <laughs> I can hear. Actually, the first pair of boobs that I ever touched. We're professionals. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the story. Go. So, uh, he tells me that you she's know what's happening though. Now, you can right? see it though, right? And she's dating this dude, Carlos, who's yeah, a color from across the bay. And I'm sure we're talking <laughs> over it for the list. About the dude that she's yeah. dating for, right? That he's like this big shot <laughs> CEO. That is all retired now, but it's loaded. And so Carlos and Ernesto are on the same softball team. And they get to talking, right? And here comes the good part. Carlos says, yo, man, this guy's got a big ass safe just sitting in the basement, just chilling. Of course, Ernesto comes to me because he knows I got mad demons. Of course, I ask him, did Emily tell Carlos to tell you to get to me I like what music. kind of safe it was? And he says, nah, dog. All she said is that it's like super legit and whatever's in it, it's got to be good. What? Old man have stiff. Yeah, I had to blow that up just to see the timestamp. <laughs> Old man have safe. That the um oh you weren't actually listening to it, but the music in the the background and like um I guess like the horns that that picked up every like ten seconds or something. It totally takes me back to like the eighties and nineties style of comics, I guess. I kind of right. like the artwork and the, I don't know, a, a lot of the darker scenes, the way they looked back then on all the felt paper, the weird paper they used to use back then. But um, I guess it wasn't so much comic books as it was uh, like older TV shows. Anywho. So, um, but yeah, yeah. So this one, this scene in particular and a few others throughout the movie where, where the editing kind of gets flashy is a, uh, is super uh, Edgar Wright to me. Like, uh, I'm looking at his IMDb. Like, all right, you've seen Shaun of the Dead, um, maybe uh, The World's End. 
that movie? No. Um, damn it, you're not wait, good world, with no, British the world's comedies. In. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. That's the yeah, that's the movie where they go drinking, right? That's just what the 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 place is called, the the World's End, right? Yes. Good job, Smarty Pants. Sainted. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like so there's a huge tonal shift between that scene and the rest of the movie. Like you can tell that that they I guess wanted to have the movie project that kind of comedy comedy or comedic tone throughout the entire film, but it just doesn't hit that point. And there's huge doldrums in the middle. At least that's what I feel like. Interesting. It does seem kind of spaced out because I feel like he has uh, that other scene. They were both directed by the same character, by the same guy, right? <clears throat> well, the scene at the end. You can't really know the difference. Um, the, I mean, the direct the directing credit goes to Peyton Reed, and um, that. Edgar Wright just doesn't want to say too much about this movie, what he had a hand in. He's uh, incredibly upset <laughs> about the entire process. But um, well, you but know, they used a lot of his screenplay. At least I feel, you know? Before you brought this up to me, I, I always had negative feelings about this because I don't like the way it's portrayed through that actor, I guess. Not a fan of him. I don't really... I don't really know what what else to say. For the most part, I... Michael I, Pena? Is that who yeah, you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, okay, yeah. Luis, okay. Yeah. yeah. For the most part, I try not to judge if, the, like, I don't just be like, I, I hate this actor, I can't stand anything they do, but, I mean, if they just, if they're doing themselves or what they what I hate on camera, I'm just like, nah, I'm out of it. And so, really? I want to say, um, I thought it was interesting that you mentioned Scott Pilgrim versus the world, because did you feel like um, the scene where... He's in the Baskin Robbins, that character, that little, that boyish sounding character. Did he sound like Michael Sarah to you? No. I probably but... didn't notice. He sounds exactly like Michael Sarah. I thought that's who it was. I was like, holy the, shit. The guy trying to order like a Hot fucking food. steak yeah. from <laughs> fucking Baskin Robbins. Baskin Robbins always finds out. Yeah, that was cute. That was cute. But no, I, I can't believe you don't like uh, Michael Pena. I mean, he uh, he's very versatile. He was in um uh, like Fury Road, Brad Pitt playing all series. He was shit. in Next Friday, and I don't. Yeah, I think he's one oh, of the I'm Joker sure brothers too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's but he's uh, I well, well I like some of the humor in this movie. You know, like uh, the scene in Baskin Robbins where his boss calls him into the back. His boss looks weird as fuck. By the way, who look who is shaped like that? What is that all about? <laughs> but all the scenes. The camera got at the back of his head where it's balding. You notice yeah. that? Like, it's like they just, they, it's perfectly in frame. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're supposed to get the inclination that uh, Scott Lang is, is better than this job. He has a you know, degree from somewhere in electrical engineering. You know what I'm, incl uh, you know what I'm inclined to believe? Um, that Baskin Robbins is promoting a mango fruit blast. <laughs> on the movie you get that you get that feeling it has to be because why be so specific like I, you could have said i you wasn't could... doubting you for a second that has to be why <laughs> although i don't understand why co companies uh take product placements if um if they're just gonna shit on that company you know like i think baskin robbins also oh, no that was the dairy queen Any and is good press galaxy. But I mean, yeah, there's any press is good press, but he's like, can you take care of this fucking idiot for me? Like, <laughs> and that guy Robbins was stupid. Did not come out on top <laughs> in this uh, in this movie. But anyway, yeah. one concept I was having trouble grasping in this movie was how good um, Paul Rudd's character is at burglary, because they legit they, as fuck. <laughs> okay, well, they mention one time they said, okay, he got fired by his job because he. He like he's he he, uh, he blew the whistle on the fact that people are getting overcharged. They fired him. So what does he do? They said he hacks into their security system, which could be something you do over the computer, maybe, right? He hacks yeah. into there and then he gives the money back to well. the people they stole it from, the people who had the online records. All and, Robin Hood style, yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's like one thing that he did. Like after that, he's like. I'm good at doing this. Like, well, I mean, is, show don't tell. Like that whole break-in sequence when he gets into uh, when he finds the Ant-Man suit. 
Like, I, I thought that scene was great. I, oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> pretty but much it's like, everything it's great as... I'm attributing to Edgar Wright. But uh, the what, what did he do? He found the um, fingerprints off the doorknob with some tape, some b- chemistry mixed some in. Chemistry. Then he had to break down a door with some frozen <laughs> dry ice or some nonsense. It was, yeah. it was bananas. Like, I, I thought that... Uh, well, that, that last part wasn't so much burglary. That's I'm okay. Well, the part about where he drilled in and you know drilled that hole, but where he got with the idea of the whole uh, nitrogen, like come on, man, that's 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 the school. This guy's a yeah, master's I mean, like, degree. It doesn't look like amateur work. Like the when the police check out the scene, I'm like, we have to be on the lookout for an electrical engineer. <laughs> <laughs> that is the only one who could have done this. Did Scott Lang break out of prison recently? <laughs> what's uh what's the deal with that guy? Um from he he was he was he acted in one of the Batman movies. He had this weird accent. He wasn't T I. He was that weird white looking Russian guy from this movie. Yeah, let me see if I can find a what name. The, for him. Where Although, did that accent come from? It definitely wasn't Russian. <laughs> is, well, is, is he a Russian person? I don't think so. What else would you call it? I, I, <laughs> ooh, I can't even say his name. David Dasmolchin. I butchered that. But okay. yeah, yeah, he was a. Yugoslavian? He was a, <laughs> something <laughs> he was superfluous to the he block. was weird looking as fuck and he was in batman as the weird looking as fuck guy who okay. <laughs> shot uh which he was in one of the he was dark knight or the dark knight rises you remember him no not um, even a little you bit didn't like this movie yet. i i i wasn't compelled to pay attention <laughs> which is a shame since i do a podcast on him on a movie so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you want to talk about Avengers time, we're loaded on that. I think this movie uh, opens with the scene of the Triskelion uh, before it's all built up. And uh, we get to see Peggy Carter and Howard Stark right out of the gate, letting you know where this movie takes place. Letting you think something weird's going on because they use the same Peggy from Captain America, but not the same Howard. Well, well yeah, huh? Yeah, I, well, I mean, why they, is the one you know, from Iron Man? They aged Peggy Carter up, but I guess like Howard Stark aged very poorly. <laughs> is what you're meant to understand. <laughs> he just you went south hard. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is weird. That is weird. But uh, it's uh, it's our introduction to uh, de-aged Michael Douglas. That was kind of seamless, like uncanny yeah. valley. Like I didn't even. I, he I thought like he was forty years old. Stop, Michael. <laughs> right? Pretty well, like, you look better than Basic Instinct. Like, how'd you pull that off? Okay. Wait and see. In the Han Solo movie that comes out in May. Uh, right. I don't. Uh, with um, they did it recently to Johnny Depp. In one of the uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and it doesn't look like young Johnny Depp. It looks like just Jack Sparrow's face without the wrinkles. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sure Michael Douglas didn't look like that in his. I guess they're shooting for like a mid 30s sort of thing. But that's when you stop looking like you, right? After that, it's but just it was really <laughs> huh? Me? Well, like. Uh, at what point does your face just look like the same thing with just the wrinkles on it? Like from 20 to 30, I could have looked a little bit different, but from here to 40, it's just, you'll just see this hanging down. Yeah. This- yeah. It, it was like a Facebook filtery kind of thing. Uh, either way with this movie, it looked, it looked super good. It looked good. Um, so yeah, I guess, uh, D- is Disney the only one that uses this technology? I can't recall seeing it in, uh, any other movies really. I know it's relatively new, like within the last eight years, but all I see it in is, uh, Disney properties, Star Wars, uh, although maybe, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean isn't Disney. Although it is a Disney theme park ride, but I feel like it's a universal movie. I don't know. Whatever. What, does that even... No? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's go. No. Okay, um, so let's um let's see. Let's take a break and we will dive into the plot points. We'll talk about 
fucking Baldy McDarren Cross and Bad Guy Stein and fucking Scott Lang's domestic problems, I guess, divorce hearings and settlements. Fucking let's take a break and get into the meat of this nonsense. And we're back. Um, Jesus Christ, where do you want to take us, Jay? The last thing uh, that I brought up was the back of that bald guy's head, so Scott Lang got <laughs> fired from work. Yeah, this is this is all um, prior to uh, to uh, stealing the Ant Man suit, which is a good scene. Um, but uh, how do you how do you feel about um, well, okay, uh, Paul I, Rudd, Scott Lang being relegated to the B plot? You know, like it, this is a post Guardians, post Winter Soldier war, and I was just not happy to see judy greer in my marvel movie acting as an estranged wife and they whipped out the uh the trope of having a the the current husband be a a cop (laughs) that has it out for our hero you know very breaking bad (laughs) as uh i mean like anything not involving hank pym (laughs) <laughs> or Ant Man specific gags. Did, did you find compelling? I mean, is this just be me being spoiled by by other better Marvel movies? No, that's what I was telling you before. It's like it somehow filled two hours of film, like and you know <laughs> somehow. Yeah, this could have been better at like eighty minutes. You know, what was the whole point of him giving like his daughter an ugly doll? Like th- this just makes me think that the way that the writers write like Ant Man is like it's supposed to be kind of goofy, I guess. And because this is why I think it took so long to make Ant Man, and this is why it wasn't part of Phase One, <laughs> is because there was no money for this shit. And it's, no one wants to see this. I mean, you know how long it took to make Deadpool? Everyone wants to see that shit. Wait, get the back, get in the back of the line, Ant Man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they whipped it out at the end of uh, phase two. Yeah, I mean, they, it made money, right? Hooray. Of course it did. <laughs> but, I mean, it just, like you were kind of saying earlier, it has to just hit all the right points. Well, when this movie does get to Ant Manning, it's it's pretty entertaining, right? Uh, did you, when you saw of it in course, theaters, yeah. did you? I, I got some stuff I want to talk about. <laughs> did, uh, did you see uh, the 3D showing when you saw it in theaters? No, I will never. No, no. It, this was actually um, uh, a pretty good 3D conversion, but and I made it a point to see it in 3D because I thought they could do some uh, some neat shit with the uh, with the scale, with the size, um, and and having them fuck around with uh, <laughs> Thomas the train engine and 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 just all manner of neat shit you can do with tiny people. So yeah, yeah, it was worth it uh, in theaters, especially the uh, the first time you get to see him uh, go tiny in the tub. That, running away okay. from the tidal wave of bath water right there like that was neat yeah that was exact that's what that movie should have been about right there as soon as that happened i was just fully aware like if i had a bunch of antennas they would have been all spiked at the same time it was like <laughs> oh my Your god spidey it was, sense was tingling. <laughs> it was honey i shrunk the kids but like you know i'm somehow more powerful because it looked it was starting to make it cartoony and it's like this is why you're watching this awesome like he's but one thing that didn't make sense though was he turned the water on and then like blew out of the bathtub. What what happened there? Yeah, he, he went in between like the grates. Well, no, of, he rode a of wave. the floor and then down into a disco, <laughs> which was going on underneath them. I guess in the middle of the day, <laughs> and yeah. then rolled outside. That makes. Underneath f- there. I mean, it's uh, a series of cool things to happen to show off how I guess perilous. It is to be. It, it it made it seem like not an advantage <laughs> being tiny. You know, he got sucked into a vacuum cleaner. Well, How is yeah, this a- you definitely don't weigh anything, so that kind of sucks, you know. But <laughs> I, um, that just I I when he got flushed through the water, he just kind of flew out of the bathtub, and I just it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't turn the bathtub on; water comes out. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm glad it, that's your gripe. No, it's I'm all stakes. It's, the fuck you. It stays collectively <laughs> right there where, where I want it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, no, that scene was dope as hell, though. But, you know, like that's one thing that um, they end up telling you a little bit later is um, when, when Hank tells him, you know, don't fuck with that um, controller, modulator. What's that thing that keeps him? 
from going, going subatomic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he wanted to mess with that. And he's just like, yeah, don't mess with that. It's like, because I tried to understand that, like, you're going to go subatomic. And I was just like, subat. I don't know what that word means, but let's think real hard. And I was just like, you're so small that holy shit. <laughs> time, to, yeah. time and yeah, space they, is irrelevant. That's crazy. They dabbled a little bit in string theory, and that was uh, until you get to Doctor Strange, uh, one of the more psychedelic scenes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe thus far. In fact, I hope they bring that back in uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, a uh, trailer of which we should have probably talked about again oh, at the top of the show, but oh well. Um, but yeah, the the quantum realm is what they called it, and uh, I thought that was pretty pretty neat. Obviously, they were going to to use that again in the film, and that is indeed how he defeats the Yellow Jacket. And uh, on that note, let's talk about Darren Cross, uh, Mr. Batty McBaldingston. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have this written down somewhere as my. Okay. So. What is it about the bald guy that's just doomed to play the bad guy in all these movies? Something about not having hair makes you evil. Jay, you should understand that as a balding <laughs> man yourself. I know, well, I know <laughs> that if I'm ever going to try out, it's going to be for the bad guys. I'll, I'll <laughs> totally be okay with that. I just want to know why it's reduced to so little. Like, how come I can't be the hero? Oh, man, you can't have a receding hairline <laughs> and save the world at the same time. <laughs> It's not a good look. And I felt like he went to the uh, Jeff Bridges school of, of bad guyery of because he's constantly like putting a hand on people's shoulder and like invading people's personal space he, as he's he saying did that something. Once. To him. No, he did that at least three or four times. <laughs> he did it to Hank Pym, like right when he met him, and then several times, like when he breaks into his house to. Said, was I a good protege? But uh, he does it to the to the military people that come over to to visit the um, uh, for his presentation. The first presentation, uh, the guy that he turns into liquid goo. <laughs> he's uh, voicing his. Uh, so it's a suit. It's like, well, it's more than a suit. I mean, didn't you just watch that highlight reel? They can do a bunch of cool that shit. That was a good little display, right? <laughs> that was a cool, like, he came up with, like, three minutes of, like, actual, you know, like, on-screen animation of what these fuckers are going to be able to do. And he's just like, so right. it's a suit. Like, hey, I don't know man, that he didn't deserved you watch to die, that? but... <laughs> yeah, and man. like why why are his family members not looking for him <laughs> i don't think you can reduce a guy to a puddle of goo who's, who's like a military higher up and have nobody ask questions <laughs> well, what was, where did this guy go what was that gun Flushed supposed to do foot. does it huh? like does it shrink anything that's not organic and then it works fine it was uh or does it is it a gun wanted... that doesn't work and he uses it to kill yeah. people. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It doesn't it, it do was, what it was intended to do. It was twofold. He, <laughs> ideally, he wanted him to uh, become a tiny version of himself. But a puddle of goo will work just as well for getting rid of his problems. <laughs> but yeah, that was supposed to be uh, the pim particles in gun a form. Badass weapon, dude. <laughs> I mean, bullets work just as fine, right? I no, see why no, that'll shrink bullets, man. That'll shrink bullets to the size to where they don't matter anymore. I mean, I guess that was, uh, and that was a pretty good scene. Like, whoa, it, it almost didn't belong in this movie, you know? <laughs> he was—he's like, a scary uh, villain, isn't he? Hey, he's not one of the better ones. In fact, he gets a little one-dimensional, and towards the end. He he's undercut by um what's her name? Hope, uh Hank Pym's daughter. <clears throat> she she says a line um like right before he goes full bad guy about um how the Pym particles are, are messing with your mind, you're not thinking straight, or something I'm like, whoa, that was not established anywhere right? throughout this oh, film. God. That he's He's yeah, going crazy or anything. Like, he's just being bad for the... <laughs> as, it's fun for him. He likes being an asshole. <laughs> There's no part of this that's messing with his brain. Oh, but by yeah, the way, the particle. Was, that, was, that was weird that, <laughs> that they threw that in there without uh, setting it up in any kind of way. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you want to say about uh, Darren Cross? I, he has um, a good smirk, you know? I like when he looks at you all suspicious-like. He's creepy, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I thought he played the scary guy pretty well. If I was, you know, a chick or smaller than him, I'd totally be afraid. 
Yeah. Um, he I, did that uh, one bit that's like, like a that, nod um, to the, the that the, once again the the villain is just um a different version of the hero. You know, it seems like with all the origin films, you just you have to fight like dark yourself, evil yourself. You know. Only this time with much more gadgetry. Like, Yellow Jacket is way better than the Ant-Man as far as suits go. Fucking up everything in that helicopter. Right? Good um, lord. But uh, there was that one little nod, little nod to all the comic book fans out there. The part where, um, what's his name, um, bald guy says, Tales to Astonish. That yeah, was yeah. the uh, first appearance of Ant-Man. Get was, you doing all the research. I think it was like... Ep- Episode issue 54, something like that. Mm-hmm. Dropping mm-hmm. information on you guys. Captain's got to teach stuff. That was, <laughs> that was from Guardians. All right. So um, oh. after, after Scott Lang uh, goes through the traumatic experience of being in a disco and a vacuum cleaner and in a tub, he immediately tries to return the suit. And that's the uh, first time he gets to uh, meet Hank Pym. At the time, Hank Pym was just uh, talking to him in the helmet headset thing. And um, there's that scene in jail where he explains to him a little bit of the rest of the plot of the movie before having ants (laughs) break him out of the, uh, break him out of jail. I, understand that the character's name is Ant-Man, but I don't understand why it needs to have such a strong connection to ants themselves. Like, very little of Spider-Man has to do with actual spiders. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's a, good, it's a good point. And I had that thought, too, but there's a, there's a line in the movie where um, I think he was just studying ants. There's <laughs> so something he was doing and he was just like well i'm gonna shrink myself and talk to these guys and it seemed like that was like the, the blocks building up to how he became the guy who shrank particles yeah that last bit is you projecting but he did uh <laughs> give the line of uh having some black mirror tech that allows him to uh communicate on the wavelength of ants in order to get them to do what he wants but when i when i looked it up on wikipedia now <laughs> it um you know how in this movie it says like he needs to have the helmet on because if he shrinks something will happen to his head <laughs> no i don't remember that. you don't remember them telling him why he needs the helmet on uh, michael uh michael douglas does get the best references in this in fact let's uh cue up that clip uh, where he gets to shit on the Avengers in addition to throwing some shade at Mr. Uh, Scott Lang himself. All right. Are you watching? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll listen. I think our first move will be calling. Call the Avengers. I spent half my life trying to keep this technology out of the hands of the Stark. I'm sure as hell I'm not going to hand deliver it to one now. This is not some cute technology like the Iron Man suit. This could change the texture of reality. Besides, they're probably too busy dropping cities out of the sky. Okay, so that last part about the cities out of the sky, it's like, okay, what are you doing to help when the fucking aliens aliens invade, huh? Where were you, huh? I don't see no giant man around here. I don't see no ant man. He's retired. Okay, well, stop talking shit. Like I do like a bit. That's a little bit further in that clip where, uh, where uh, Scott Lang's like, man, why don't why don't we just send the ants to take care of all this? And Hank Pym has to go. They're they're ants, you know. Oh, I think you wanted <laughs> you me to play that. that. Part. <laughs> it's entirely okay, but um, but yeah, Michael Michael Douglas, I feel, does get the best parts, and he's he's the best actor in it, and um. Yeah, good callback to uh, to Age of Ultron, our previous movie, and uh, a reason uh, as as to why you don't call the Avengers, which I feel like uh, every Marvel film that isn't an ensemble piece uh, suffers from uh, finding a reason <laughs> not to assemble the Avengers. You know, so uh, so I felt like they played this movie uh, close enough to the vest and kept it in the pocket enough to not warrant. Uh, having the rest of the Avengers there to well, solve said problem. Okay, so but, something, something about this villain, it wasn't like... It wasn't that obvious that he was a villain to, like, the cops until, like, until 
choo-choo ch train started exploding, right? Like, because nobody, yeah, nobody cause... knew this guy had a bad plan, that he was killing people, that he was shrinking, you know, hiding. Not hiding, but shrinking that one guy and throwing him in the toilet. No one knew that there was a bad guy <laughs> floating around. They yeah, and even then, normal. you're supposed to understand that the, the pimp particles are a bit of a myth. You know, like uh, they they used they used him as a soldier during World. Ooh, what oh, war was he did that look so in? cool when they showed those fucking images? Uh, did when it? they would zoom in on the ant? Yeah, that looked awesome. It was great footage. It was <laughs> grainy footage of people oh, being pulled see, on strings. I'm trying to compare this to where where we should be at with technology at this point. In time. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not. I'm not saying. It's, I'm it's just a saying. Comic that. book, Trey. Just imagine this. Got your comic book on on screen. All right, look how awesome that looks. This tiny He's little ant operating a machine gun by what? Stepping on the trigger? Oh, was it operating it? <laughs> yeah, they they zoomed in on that. Okay, thing. a little overkill. <laughs> no leverage on something that small. Um, uh, God, there was something else I was gonna say about. Oh, okay. When that guy, like, didn't want to give, you know, when he was talking smack about the suit, calling it a suit, saying you shouldn't just be allowed to have this. One of the lines that... What's the ball guy's name, Trey? I keep forgetting. Darren Cross. Darren Cross. He described it as, as an all-purpose weapon of war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then he showed a video of how there's just going to be he factories. Gave, like three examples <laughs> as to as to how it could be used for for didn't even uh, say peacekeeping nothing like that and then they showed something about like about them peacekeeping and they showed one of them like shrinking in size and then it like flew through like a car on the road and then the mm -hmm. car blew up <laughs> yeah the <laughs> guy opens a suitcase and gets a laser through the heart yeah and uh well, that yeah, one I... doesn't bother anyone else the car on the road that blows up like well, all right man this, there's this isn't a peacekeeping you're just trying to kill the bad guys <laughs> followed immediately by an army of yellow jackets taking off through the sky yeah i thought they uh it, it, it was played intentionally to be like ominous like and immediately uh the weapons contractor who gets turned to goo uh says you yeah, think about this technology in the hands of our enemies <laughs> like that's not good either right it's bad <laughs> yeah so, uh, so, yeah, a bit of an oversight. And a good reason as to why um, Hank Pym wanted to keep this out of the hands of the Starks, you know? This isn't some cute technology. But, <laughs> but um, I, I don't like his reason for for um, recruiting Scott Lang. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's – it was way too convoluted of a scheme to, uh, to um, A, I don't – I, like, why was he even monitoring <laughs> an, an ex-thief? He probably heard I, about it in the news. Um, and thought, this is my guy, as opposed to... Did some uh, research on him and found out that they're very similar, right? I mean, like, it's just... It, all you need is to put a guy in a suit because, you know, you... you Yes. You're too old for yes, it. exactly. We're going something. back to the Captain America speech where he just had to go, okay, well, like, he just gave him his interview and goes, okay, I think I found my candidate. He didn't, he but, didn't, he didn't okay. need to interview him. He, I, I mean, I guess he still had something. Uh, he still has his family. They're alive. It's not like they're dead, but. <laughs> right. In Captain America, you could kind of get because he was a goody two-shoes. He wasn't going to abuse the power. Uh, but. But like there are better candidates than than uh, granted he's an expert thief and I guess you're you're trying to use a guy for a B and E, but you, you could just hire any See, old kind expert of expert thief. Athlete. Where did that happen? When did that happen? Was that his job? He, well, <laughs> you know, he, he moonlighted as an expert did thief. Did he? Is that what they said, or we just led to believe that? Well, I mean, they they showed it when he broke into his house to um. To, uh, acquire the suit in the first place but still that is not enough of a reason <laughs> to use scott lang get a not criminal get an athlete or use your daughter <laughs> who already knows the building inside and out you can't use there his daughter any... because it's gonna wear on her body <laughs> right and yeah okay i guess you're okay with with having <laughs> paul rudd's head deteriorate that's fine. Well, he's um, he's okay with it. Plus, he doesn't want to lose his daughter. He already lost his wife. Why would an ex-con 
want like a very distinctive horn for his vehicle. Or is it is oh. that is that his or is that his friends? By the way, T.I. is in this movie. I think we should say stop trying to make him an actor. But uh, yeah, he 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 um is that uh, fucks that... up with the Keystone Cops at the end there and and gets himself re caught. I guess that's his friend's van though, right? Even so, yeah, you guys are both bad guys that have had problems with the law. You don't want like to. I've heard that ringtone before. Fuck that. No, it sounds like all the other ringtones or horns, whatever, you know, you're talking about. Yeah, it was it was a weird excuse to keep him in the movie. Although I did like that joke at the end there of, you know, we're we're going to save Scott Lang at all costs. And then they see the the police barricade backing it up, backing it up, (laughs) back it up. Uh All right. Back. Nice and slow. Yeah, that was a, a, a cute line for otherwise uh, unnecessary characters. Uh, we do have another Avenger in this film, though. Eh? We got some Anthony Mackie action. Cap can never find out about this. How do you feel about the uh, exhibit of uh, Falcon's, I guess, ability to shoot guns and fly? <laughs> versus He was uh, doing Ant-Man. a lot of work. He was but like, like, what do you expect, dude? Like... If your if your opponent shrinks down to the size of an ant, and the and, goggles really yeah. made that fight, <laughs> he almost lost. Happening. Yeah, he I he probably should have, but it's like it's ridiculous when you think about it. Because like watching that, like as good as he did, that tore apart that other scene where like those. I think um, there's more than one guy shooting at um, at Ant Man. I think he's trying to retrieve that, trying to retrieve whatever. But um, there's like four, there's like three characters shooting at him, and I'm just like, you guys are aiming at an ant. <laughs> yeah, that what is a are problem. They They're very close to hitting this guy. This is crazy. <laughs> and just like, yeah, they even they even took out the ant that he was riding on. Yeah. That's on the hell the Anthony. Jesus. <laughs> Anthony. That is that is a one in a million billion trillion Ridiculous. shot, and he hit it. All right. Everybody's All right. good with a gun in this movie. That is definitely anti stormtrooper aim. <laughs> Not only <laughs> did you hit an ant flying at you, out of the millions of other ants flying at you, you got the one he was riding, you know? Ugh. <laughs> this movie. Um, yeah, I thought it was cute. I thought it was cute. Uh, in summation, before we get to. Um, this is the end of uh, Phase 2, so we're going to stack up our uh, Phase 2 Marvel movies against each other. And I guess um, at the end of uh, Phase 3 or going into um, Infinity War, we'll, we'll do the whole list. Uh, that's going to take for fucking ever. But um, but uh, before we get to that, uh, Debril, how would you feel about this movie on the whole? I... There were things that I liked about it, definitely. Um, I, I guess I'd have to go with um, the, the sound. What was that song Some that played uh, on there. Alexa at the end? Play oh, something by The Cure? Um, Destruction or something? Destruction, okay. Or Disintegrate. Yeah, thought... it, was, it was weird. But the... I thought it was neat setting the soundtrack to that because the... Uh... You know, they did some cute things with that end fight scene by uh, expanding out to uh, Cassie's viewpoint, Scott Lang's daughter, and seeing that, oh, yeah, this really isn't <laughs> nearly as devastating <laughs> as, as, as what's happening in their well, point of view. <laughs> it's 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 kind of like uh, we were talking about with Quicksilver, where it's like he can only get so much screen time in like a larger movie, like, um, like an Avengers type movie, because you have to stop everybody else to show what's happening. Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. hard to just throw Ant Man in on another movie, and if it's just his scene where him in a one on one, like okay, not so not so difficult, but like it's really hard to show this ant creature just pop up when there's like six celebs on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll see him again in Civil War, and I thought he was utilized uh, very effectively uh, for that, you know, because he's a good character to have pop up and wreck shit, you know. Well, like when you break it down, he's like like the. Uh, like as a character that's able to just shrink down to the size of the ant and have all these abilities, he's a great character to have. I was thinking about this when he was making fun of Tony Stark's like suit and Tony Stark's suit is insane. And it's not just the suit, like the suits and like in the other movies, how he had like, he had the, the suits performing security, like that one that grabbed his wife and they're sleeping. Like 
it's crazy like what he came up with but this guy can shrink the size to fucking ant size that's way mm. different that's way different that's fucking okay. crazy because if there were 10 of those guys in one room like, you're fucked what are you gonna do on that one that that's why like they made it such a big deal like I don't know why it was his first thought to think what happens if the enemies got this. What happened if anybody got this? You shouldn't be allowed to just do that shit. Shrink down to the size of an ant, you and all your friends, and go fuck shit up. <laughs> just the yeah. amount of havoc you could create so easily. So you like the soundtrack? You like um, some of the things that they did with the with the size distortion? Yeah, um, literally any scene where he was like super short doing something cool, I was all about it. I was totally it just it just hit that that spot and I don't it was like I don't know what else I could ask from it, so I kind of enjoyed it for what it was. And I'm kind of stoked to see what, how they're going to do this with two people in the next movie. Mm, yeah, yeah, because uh, Hope, who was a much candidate to be Ant-Man this entire movie, uh, finally gets to be the Wasp uh, when Ant-Man and the Wasp hits theaters uh, sometime after Infinity War. I don't know when that's going to be set on the uh, on the timeline, because you, you, you can imagine that uh, after this uh, Avengers Infinity War comes out, uh, there's not going to be much Earth. <laughs> Uh, left to set a movie on <laughs> but uh, apparently they're gonna have one so okay okay As, yeah i feel like that's just a bit of a spoiler knowing that that movie comes out after infinity war <laughs> you remember that scene where your boy michael pina or whatever um mm -hmm. where he said like he wanted to whistle as to as uh so he can get into character while he's a, a security guard yeah yeah you remember what he whistled Oh, yeah, yeah, they threw in uh, the second Disney reference. Now, okay, Disney acquired the rights to Marvel in 2010, and I believe uh, Avengers Age of Ultron was um, 2015, right? Yep. Yeah, so, and this movie came out later that year, so this is also 2015? This movie came out, I think, in August of 2015? That's weird that they're just now uh, deciding to throw in um, some some Disney uh, Disney proper references. What what song was he whistling, by the way? It's a small world. It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's, it's a, small a small world. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cute. That's cute. Yeah. One of the um, the. A major concern I had when I was collecting comics back in 2010, uh, when Disney took over uh, with that, they would really, I guess, taper down on, I guess, some of the violent nature of like a Wolverine comic book or um, just kind of make it more kid friendly. Um, and they haven't done that to the comics. And so far, um, it hasn't really been that intrusive into the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, I mean, really, all you get is um, like Peter Parker playing with a Star Wars Death Star in Homecoming, uh, Ultron singing There Are No Strings from Pinocchio, and now Michael Pena whistling It's a Small World. So I'm, I'm okay. Oh, if, yeah, if, I didn't even think if, about that. The <laughs> Ultron Disney's, one. Yeah. What? Really? Well, like, I mean, when it when it happened, like, I made the connection to Pinocchio, but I forgot Pinocchio Disney. Like, it's just such a long <laughs> time ago for Disney, you know? Yeah, Disney is... is it owns the world. <laughs> did uh did you see that tweet about um uh Disney or rather the movie being called uh Frozen? Uh it, just so that people when people Google uh Disney Frozen, they don't look up uh Walt Disney being in cryostasis. <laughs> Instead they get the Disney princess. <laughs> I did not just know that. To, just to take off people <laughs> from uh, catching a whiff of what Mr. Walt Disney's doing when they finally decide to unthaw him. Where's our Stan Lee cameo? Stan Lee was right at the end in the second story where they set up, um, was it the scene from the, for the next movie? <laughs> Essentially, yeah. The, uh, where, it wasn't a post credit scene, but it was a scene at the very end. Which, by the way, that whole Michael Pena monologue sequence at the end didn't really make much sense. And I think that's what they were going I'm for. I'm trying to think, what was that one, uh, what was that one for? What? Like what oh, was the, who, where was Stanley? No, what was the story for that? Like, what was he saying? Literally, yeah, he was talking about how oh, how what's his name Anthony Falcon's Mackie. looking for him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, essentially, but like in a very obviously Michael Pena convoluted 
sort of way where the story just ended Somehow with some yeah. another Edgar Wright scene since I'm, I'm giving him charge of all the good wins. Um, and before we get to this uh, uh, ranking system, uh, well, what what are post credit sequences? The post okay, so there was uh, the the one where they introduced the wasp outfit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're gonna let you be in the next movie. Is what they're saying. It's yeah. how we do it. We can't have women co-starring in the first movie. You're a sequel kind of girl. <laughs> the uh, the second one was uh, Falcon and Captain America and Bucky. Were yeah, Bucky's an incredibly hand. deliberate tease for um, Civil War. For the win- Civil War. I'm sorry. Um, and was that scene in the movie? Like, didn't they just pull that, pluck that scene, like verbatim so. from the movie? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the first time we've done it like that. Um, but yeah, it was incredibly effective. <laughs> I like seeing that. And it's been teased since um, since Winter Soldier. Like, uh, the next time you saw Captain A and Falcon together was in um, Age of Ultron. And, and, you know, Falcon gave that line at the party of, I'm happy just casing, chasing cold leads on our missing persons case. So, like, I, I really enjoy that kind of a uh, connective tissue that flows throughout Marvel. I I think that that wasn't the first scene though that they just that they pulled right out of a movie. I don't think. I thought there was one. I other can't one. think of another one. I know that um, Captain America, the first one, uh, the post credit scene was just sort of like a trailer for the Avengers. But you know, none of those scenes were yeah. in the in the movie per se. Mm. I mean, you know, it was it was a trailer for the movie, but. I can't recall uh, any other movie that is um, plucked directly. Uh, at least so far, I think another movie in the future uh, uh, does it. How long do, does it take them to put on these Ant Man outfits, man? Does it does it seem like that scene in the jail cell? Didn't it didn't it say ten, nine, eight, and then he was like, "Oh shit, I better put on this Ant Man outfit because I have seven, six, five seconds to fucking go super small in here." Hmm, I don't recall a countdown at all. The ants that brought him the suit? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. They, and then there were, were ants drawing, crawling on the security camera, yeah. They were drawing numbers. Ten, nine, Oh, eight. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what it took were about they? eight seconds for him to put that outfit on. And then huh. there was the, the scene um, uh, where, what's his name, put it on in, in the actual air aircraft airplane oh in the helicopter yeah right. i thought that was kind of ridiculous jesus <laughs> christ this thing is insane titanium you say <laughs> yeah that was a little that was a little bit silly <laughs> that was a little bit silly i agree um and then there's that scene where hank pym just throws the tank out the window without with regard to nobody's safety yeah, and they foreshadowed that heavily. A bit I wish there was uh, something more innocuous on his uh, on his keychain, because when I saw the tank on the keychain, I'm like, obviously, yeah. <laughs> that is going to come into play <laughs> later on in the movie. Although I don't know what other uh, keychain ornaments you could have that would be uh, handy in a tight spot. Like usually it's what the Eiffel Tower. I don't know when you can use the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Either something more Disney or the Chomp, the Chomp uh, chain thing from the Mario Brothers. What's it called? Oh, yeah. That'd the be giant cool. Chain Chomp. That'd be. Neither of us know his name. <laughs> chain Chomp. And yeah, you could break out of a building with that thing for sure. Well, yeah, totally. If you <laughs> fucking made that thing super sized. Is it weird at all? They're just gonna keep that giant ant as a pet. That wasn't even Anthony. That's just a random like. That's like number two eighty nine. I got. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm amazed that it was such a low number. I'm like, there are billions of ants. By the way, in this world. How, how did you? Where's get number to? one? Uh, yeah, one through like twenty thousand should be dead and gone. Good point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, just keep starting. All right. Yeah, yeah I got. I think I incredibly hit. honey. I shrunk the kids um, in the middle of that movie. I promise that was scarier a second ago when he pops out of the ground there. Uh. Oh, the, yeah, those things, I don't know, those were all awesome. I, I, I like those. I just feel like as like, that it's was not a an Avengers movie, of but... every training sequence from Avengers 2 Doctor Strange. Yeah. I'm not saying, I know. I'm not saying <laughs> it was innovative. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying that um, it, sh- it should have been like I don't know, like, uh, instead of, like, hitting the big screen, it should have hit, like, there should be a screen in between. 
where it's like here's a here's a short eight minute film that happened between now and then, and now you're gonna see this guy <laughs> show up on the next Avengers movie. <laughs> yeah, oh, that would be funny if they just had Ant Man be every post credit scene for an Avengers well, movie. I, I feel like for... in a way they just kind of added Falcon. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, a it's the one they could afford, and b like you, you, the movie was slowing down, and you need conflict. Yeah, and to... and now that you know that they can't use Hulk, you know they're running out of Avengers. They need at least thirteen, right? Ooh. Or something, or something. All right, so what's um, go, what's going on? You want to do the um, you want to do the uh, the wrap up phase two session? Uh, yeah. So for this, um, we're just gonna stack up the phase two movies against each other. Uh, I don't want to do like a whole one through ten or eleven. Have we done eleven films thus far? This would be a, what's our tally uh, 11, so far? Yeah, as podcast go six and six. This would be twelve. Jesus Christ, we're cooking. Um, but I will refresh the audience historical list. So the last time around we did this, uh, from six to number one, you had Iron Man 2, Hulk, Captain A, Thor, the first Iron Man, and your favorite was the Avengers. The Avengers. Um, and that's pretty much uh, how, how my list uh, came down with a few alterations. But for this, um, Jabril... Let me write this down as you're... Uh, this is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one because I feel like our top three are going to be about the same. Maybe mm -hmm. ranked a little bit differently. We're going to start with <laughs> worst first. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. I'll, try, and, I'll try and keep the reasoning kind of short so we don't spend too much time being silly on this. Are you, oh, are you ready for it? go long. We barely talked about it, man. Uh, yes, I'm ready. Bring the ruckus. The worst movie of phase two. Mmm. I, uh, there were, okay. <laughs> you asked me if I was ready. <laughs> well, now I, well, I, we should say this is between, um, Iron Man 3, Thor, the Dark World, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, Age of Ultron, and this current movie Ant -Man. we're talking about, Ant-Man. Um, I mean, what's it between? So Do you have some obvious candidates? Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's the bottom three and the top three. The bottom three consist of Iron Man 3, Thor, the Dark World, and Ant-Man. Okay. Yeah, that's about how I'd have it too. So let's see where we shuffle out in the beginning. But yeah, what do you have for number six, man? Quit making me wait. You're killing me, Smoth. Uh, let's let's go ahead and plug in. Um, Iron. Eh. Let's, <laughs> let, 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 let's go with Iron Man three. You have clearly never made a hard decision in your life. Iron Man three is your uh, least favorite so far. Least on favorite. Okay, okay. And uh, honestly, um, I'm going to be the same for you on that one. Do you, um, I, that for sure, if I remember the podcast correctly, I was very down. On, I kind of uh, liked it near the end. Like, and yeah, you did. But I still hated like the whole villain, at, like just the villains that they used and what, how they nerfed one of my favorite ones. Like You, you guys, were incredibly upset about the Mandarin, yes. Thumbs down. <laughs> Specifically because of the uh, Mandarin scene, is that is no, that not what's just not that? Like, I back? really didn't like the whole extremist thing to begin with. Okay, like not the, okay. the not the thing, but just the result of it. Like, um, their powers and abilities. Yeah, and how Guy Pierce was. I had, what's his name? Killian. Yeah, yeah Killian was Aldridge. responsible for the for the uh, extremist tech and Pepper Potts being a badass for no real reason again. Yeah. I hear that. Well, I hear that. I guess if I'd have to say number five, you know, I, I want to throw Thor down there because I feel like overall I may have had more fun in the Ant-Man, even though, I don't know, Thor was probably a better movie, but Ant-Man was fun. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. the scenes where yeah. he got to shrink were just so awesome. <laughs> okay. And honestly, I'm struggling to remember a lot of Thor the Dark World. I know it's Malakath is the bad guy. And yeah, it got a little Shakespearean with the brotherly drama. Um, and Natalie Portman's always a bit of a waste in these movies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I can see your reasoning for, uh, for having um, uh, Ant-Man higher than Thor. But I'm switching that order around on you. I'm saying uh, Ant-Man is my fifth fifth favorite movie on here. Um, I'd, <laughs> I uh, I always appreciate Loki. <laughs> so uh, 
I'm willing to to take a Thor the Dark World over Ant Man in this instance. Okay, so now we got the top three, and th- this one I. Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Avengers. I feel like Guardians. Yeah, what do you take, man? Guardians Jesus. gave me a lot. Like the soundtrack was dope as hell. The like, it's just it's a fun overall overall entertaining movie. Um, however, I feel like I want to pull it down to fourth favorite on account of uh, I feel like when I use the other two comparisons of Captain America and Avengers, I feel like there's a lot more action. No. Yeah, a lot more, a lot more action, or I like the action more. There was something about Guardians of the Galaxy that's a little closer to Disney than I'd like it to be. Really, interesting, interesting. Okay, definitely, okay. definitely a fun watch. But um, there was even though Captain America was confusing as fuck. There was like like the fight it scenes. It wasn't even that. I mean, it was one of the uh, the deeper thinks of the MCU thus far. But I didn't think it was murder on the mind. Uh, That's because we watched yeah. it like three times. But the, <laughs> that is true. We did have time to break it down. And and the uh, Avengers. I mean, you know, it's it's the whole team. Like, I mean, whether the movie if the movie itself was bad, it doesn't really matter. Like, the team of the Guardians of the Galaxy are the equivalent of maybe two Avengers. <laughs> and, well, I mean, I, I just appreciate the feat that they were able to introduce, uh, what is it, five characters in their own movie. Um, and I brought this up on the podcast that, yeah, it took four other previous establishing films before we even got to an Avengers. And I feel like I, you know, love the Guardians just as much as I do any of the Avengers. And that's a credit to James Gunn for making them fun right out of the gate. So, uh, I mean, um, here, here's a good question. Um, I know that this is uh, your third favorite movie in Phase 2, but would you say that overall it uh, ranks like somewhere in your top five or, yeah, top five overall within the MCU? Um, now, I'm not asking you to put it in a specific slot, but I'd have it's, to say it's pretty high up there, yeah? Thus far, yeah, it definitely stands out as, um, as one of the better origin movies, for sure. Definitely, okay. like... Thor, Hulk, like these are all rough starts. Iron Man's origin was dope as hell. The Avengers was really good. Um, yeah, definitely. Guardians goes up. Dar- Guardians gets a gets a good thumbs up. Um, okay. you, you're number four. Oh Jesus. Um, so yeah, I'm Iron Man three, Ant Man followed by Thor: The Dark World. What am I putting in that three slot? Let me take a peek at these guys. Um, yeah, like you, I'm between. Um, oh fucking duh, Age of Ultron. In fact, shit. <laughs> I take back. I take back my um Uh-oh. my number four slot. Um, number four is Age of Ultron. I thought that that's what and I asked. Yeah. Your fourth. Yeah. So your your third favorite movie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Age of Ultron. Yeah. I'm a. Uh, um, and while this does sit four of the Phase Two movies, I didn't like Iron Man three or Iron Man. I I rank Age of Ultron pretty low. Um, overall within the MCU, I thought they did way too much with that movie. I thought they tried so hard to shoehorn in um, generally unnecessary characters. And while I've come around on Scarlet Witch, it's only because I know that she's going to be useful uh, later. But I thought it was a very ham-handed way of getting everybody um, to where they are now. Like Age of Ultron was a bit of a mess. Yeah, the, the, these three movies, Iron Man 3, Iron Man, and Age of Ultron, are uh, lower on my list, <laughs> which is why uh, <laughs> it seems like I'm shitting on uh, a lot of uh, Marvel lately. But we, we've we've gotten to three of my least favorites in, um, in this last few rounds of uh, podcasting. But it's going to pick up soon. It's going to get good again. Oh, definitely. Um, definitely. We'll get to that right at the... Yeah, right at the end of this. Where so okay, so that's your number four. Yeah, let me and let me do. Uh, so, that's my number four. Let me give you my number three as well. Now that we're looking at this list again, yeah, Thor: The Dark World. Throw that shit up there. I just told you about how much I love me some Loki. Um, and yeah, while this, uh, you know, not until uh, Ragnarok do we get to see the full comedic powers of uh, <laughs> Chris Hemsworth. Um, I appreciate the uh, Shakespearean drama of it all, and it's always nice to see. Um, but you're not king, Anthony Hopkins, uh, going ham 
on some uh, on some godly children. So yeah, Thor uh, Thor the Dark World in my number three spot. Even though it's a uh, pretty critically panned, um, I, I I enjoy this movie more than most. Okay, so, give me a number two movie. So my number what two, or so so we're on my second favorite out of here. Honestly, and, uh, you're what, gonna. What are the two movies up against? You got a. Uh... It's Captain America or Avengers: Age of Ultron. You're gonna hate me. That's you're, easy. You're one. gonna hate me. I. What I, are you really going to? I have to go with my second favorite is Captain America: The Winter Shoulder. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? I, because, dude, it's there's so much like to gain from the Avengers movie. There's, I know that like I didn't understand, and yeah, I still kind of don't. Of there's. <sighs> I'm I know sorry. That, Talk about Captain America. I'll yell at you in a second. <laughs> Captain America Actually, no. was pretty oh, dope. It's just like it, comparatively, I saw a lot more of my characters on screen. Man, what what more do you want from me? <laughs> I can't believe you put it at number four. It wasn't that bad. And it's a little bit better than that. Yeah, you got to see him on screen, but but I ah no, I was pissed, and, and a lot of it didn't make sense. But I mean, it was a sequel to Avengers. I got to see more Avengers, Avengers fight happy. scenes and yeah, shit. Like it's Buster totally Buster. awesome. Huh? You're just happy to see the Hulkbuster armor, aren't you? God damn it. More than just that. I mean, Quicksilver? You, no, you were... that's, <laughs> that was disappointing. And so was Scarlet Witch. God damn. Yeah, that was, yeah that, it's really just the, the second episode of Avengers to me. <laughs> Okay. I have, okay. I have to I rank mean, it this way because I can't let Captain America win. There's no. It just Captain America hold... needed another superhero. I would have been down. You put <laughs> yeah, Black and Panther they put him in. next to Black Widow the entire movie. I said another superhero. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was such a stronger story. Yeah, and 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 who else showed up? Who else? Uh, um, Hercule from Dragon Ball Z, someone else who's super awesome for a straight up human. I need some superpowers in my life, man. You this is the Marvel girl, comic universe. You got a metal arm. There were four bonafide heroes and in up, that movie. About that. The quarter of the Avengers. <laughs> about. I really want to know how fucking super enhanced Bucky really is. That metal arm was super strong, but he's super fast. Two. <laughs> So yeah. what else, you know, like even though in fucking Black Panther, he's got that. He's got no arms, so he's probably faster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they uh, what the Soviet scientists said they, they they'd worked on him and uh, Ar- Arnim Zola had experimented with him back in the 40s. And uh, I, I don't know how much. Mission aerobic report. exercises you get in between being thawed out for missions, but he kept all of his muscle mass, so I, he's as fast as a souped-up guy, but not as fast as Captain A. It really, the metal arm is the uh, is the trick <laughs> with him. But either way, just a, a generally more cohesive. Uh, while it was a complicated story, it was much better put together than age of ultron i, I, I just can't believe but it is kind of a mess got age, age of ultron ranked that high but uh all right i mean so, that much higher than guardians of the you liked it more than guardians of the galaxy <laughs> again guardian guardians is kind of like it's 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 like um they touched on so many different things they couldn't specify in what i really wanted out of the movie so it was kind of like one of your knocks was, was the Disneyfication of it. Meanwhile, Ultron steady singing, "There are no strings on me." <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> no, look, okay. I didn't know any of the characters from Guardians before that movie, even though they're somewhat super in their own way. There's still no Avengers. Um, there's a talking rat with a machine gun. Jay. Yeah, he was my favorite what character. Do you what? Want? Hey, <laughs> what you want to fight about it? <laughs> Ah, uh, fuck. What's your All list, right. Trey? All right, so for me, it's between Captain A, Winter Soldier, and Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, uh, I almost want to put Captain A in front just to give it the credit that you're not going to. <laughs> but, but it's um, in my number yeah, two. Yeah, true enough, and it's it's going to be my number two as well because I think Guardians of the Galaxy is just such a stellar introduction to uh, the cosmic realm. 
of Marvel. So I'm, I'm going to put Guardians number one and uh, Captain America Winter Soldier number two. And that'll that'll round out our list for phase two. I cannot put into words how disappointed I am with you. Well, don't be mad <laughs> later if we do an overall like com- like if we do an overall yeah we'll phase do an overall and, for like, the end of and, phase two because this was these, fun. these don't well and these don't you know you know these don't rank exactly how I rank them now. You know what I mean? Like because I yeah, really yeah, do yeah, like totally. Guardians of the Galaxy, and it sucks that I had to do it that way. I just feel like as far as comparing, <laughs> it sucks you had to. I had to, to I had to do it. I'm you sorry, that Age Guardians. Of was a better fucking movie. Oh my god! Uh, what's a better movie? It's which one I liked more. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. One of my guardians. So uh, this is the end of phase two, and when we come back, we'll be on phase three. Which is what I Captain don't America: know. Civil War. Civil War. That's number our next three. Movie? Awesome. It'll be Civil awesome. War. And I get to be happy again. Civil yes. War. Uh... Civil War followed by Doctor Strange, and then, Volume Two, and then Homecoming, Volume Two, and, and, then, and then Ragnarok, <laughs> and then Black Panther, and then we're caught. We up. are caught the fuck up. Says June Brill. This is March Brill. We're not caught up yet, but I can't wait though, because now everything's on Netflix. Civil War, <laughs> everything's on Netflix, and I can watch it with the subtitles on. I can watch it in all rooms. I don't have to find a copy. I try to convince myself I should buy a copy of all these movies, but they're like 30 bucks. Pray for piracy. <laughs> Funny. Shame on you. <laughs> Support okay, the fine, things you love. Fine. This is Somehow, why Migos is considered fine. a rapper. Let's break something down. you won't buy albums. Let's break no. something down. So, stealing it is wrong by downloading it one time that's wrong, and then... But if I somehow use an account that my girlfriend is paying for because it has like five usernames pays about twelve dollars a month and i get all this stuff all the time somehow that's perfectly legal i mean that's technically weird. the movie industry wants you to buy the blu-ray <laughs> so i that, think uh... you're hung up on the fact that you're you're paying for it therefore it's right <laughs> what i mean I yeah pay for specifically my that it's the same thing with spotify that. it's like oh well I can't download my own movies, but Spotify can like just have just for nine ninety nine. Like you don't have to buy movies anymore. You can just pay for them this way. You get all the fucking music now for nine ninety five. It seems. How did you get all that music for nine ninety five? It's, it's it's a gimmick. I don't know. It's they're not yours. Me, the, the artists hate it too. <laughs> but with, otherwise, we were just going to steal and steal and steal. <laughs> <laughs> until someone came along and look here's a way to kind of give money to it for the things <laughs> you love to do please is that how it became a business <laughs> it's very cheap for what it is it's ridiculous it's it's essentially stealing there's no way I mean, that ten dollars is going to go to brand new uh bill burr <laughs> um us if we ever get on spotify like uh, what fraction um, um, of the 9.95 do they get a month of what? Not nearly enough, but the metrics <laughs> make it so that a little bit of the money makes it into their hands. You know, it's it's it's, it's hard out there for a pimp. It's bonkers. Well, because okay, you you remember Blockbuster and Hollywood Video? They buy like one movie at like the price of twenty bucks, and they whore it out at five ninety nine a night. And it's like they just like these, yeah. do they pay any of that money to the people who made the movie, or is it just to the they just bought it and. Rent it out. Mm, we're better off talking to our friend Brian about that. I don't know too much about uh, the retail DVD VHS industry of the 90s. I'm sorry. I'm saying yeah, it's – well, you're undercutting a market by allowing them to rent like that. It's like how video, uh, video game developers are mad – or at GameStop all over the world because they're just – people will not like the game and sell it, and then someone else will buy it instead of buying a new copy. You damn skip you, though, Will. <laughs> They need a hero. They need Ant Man to come in there, <laughs> grab Hop you by your receding box. hairline, and make you pay for your fucking media. That's a podcast. I'm calling it. Oh, um, we're on Twitter at Infinity yeah. Warmups. At uh, Infinity Warmups. Literally everywhere you go. Um, we've made a litany of mistakes, and my goal was to um, not do a correction section. Um, until someone yelled at us at our uh, infinitywarmup at gmail.com. 
Um, but it, we're never going to have listeners, so I'm never going to correct any of these mistakes <laughs> that I'm constantly making. So uh, let it rock. Uh, but otherwise, find us. Uh, tell us how bad we are at this. Also, Dax Shepard has a podcast, and we're better than him. Otherwise, we were just going to steal and steal and steal. <laughs>